Hi, this is Oscar from the Smartphone Coaching System and welcome to video number two in this uh, coaching series, How to Get More Customers Now. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the first video and I hope you did the exercises. In video number two, we're going to talk more about the strategy. So in video number one, I kept talking about this strategy. So this is what we'll cover in uh, video number two, uh, a strategy that we have used to double sales three years in a row for our event business. And like I said in the first video, I cannot guarantee that you'll get the same results. I can guarantee, however, it will be a lot easier to get customers if you use this strategy. Uh, this strategy is perfect for you if you're a small business owner, uh, one-man show or a few salespeople. Uh, a small, small business, this, this, this uh, strategy works perfect. So I'm going to go through, through three types of uh, salespeople and the one that I recommend you, that you become, and uh, bec by becoming that salesperson, everything will get, will get easier. So um, if you look at the first uh, type of salesperson, what is that? This is many times what you associate sales with. It's the crocodile salesperson. If you look at this crocodile, you see it has a huge, huge mouth. And a lot of salespeople, they jab, they talk, they talk, they talk, they, they're the crocodile, they eat you with their, <laughs> with their talking. Uh, and this is not uh, a professional way of selling. If you've done any sales training, uh, then you know that uh, it's more about listening and asking the right questions. So it's not about talking. Uh, if you haven't done any sales training, uh, you may think that this is the way, but telling is not selling. That is completely the opposite. You probably experienced it yourself. A salesperson just kept talking, 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 talking. So this is absolutely not what we want to do. And uh, some people with sales trainings uh, they are like this as well, even though they, they read the, the books and taken the courses, but they, 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 they get hired they, to speak, to talk, <laughs> because uh, they're good at talking, so people think they're naturally a good salespeople. But if you look at top producers, many times they are much better at listening than just talking. So that's the first kind of salesperson, and I don't want you to, to turn into a crocodile salesperson that just talks, talks, talks about yourself and your own product. So, number two. I don't know if you can see my drawing here. Uh, I'm much better at uh, coaching than I am at drawing, luckily. So, uh, but uh, the second kind of salesperson is the elephant salesperson. And if you look at an elephant here, it has two big ears. So, that means that he can listen. He's really good at listening. So, he will ask questions. He would tune in to the, what the what, find a little bit, fine tune a little bit his offers towards the needs of the client. He would, uh, uh, if you're trained in sales, most of the sales trainings today, they will teach you to become like this, by asking open-ended questions, by digging into needs and uh, building rapport by uh, asking questions. Uh, if you've been, uh, if you're a lady or even as a guy, maybe you've been on a date with uh, someone that just talks, 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 talks and uh, it's not that interesting. And then on the other hand, you might have been on with someone that is interested in you, that asks questions, that uh, uh, makes you open up and it's really easy to connect to that person. So this is a much better approach than the first approach. And uh, most, uh, the majority, I've, I've done a lot of sales training. Before I started my own business, I, had, uh, I was working in sales for, for hotels. I've done a lot of sales trainings and a lot of, read, read a lot of book of sales. Most of them will teach you exactly this that ask questions, listen, and uh, uh, match your offer as for the, the customer needs. And this is fine, this is perfect. If, you, if you're doing this, you're already way ahead of most people, because a lot of people are still in the old <laughs> jabbing, talking, talking, talking. So by doing this, you're already ahead of a lot of people. However, since most sales trainings will teach you this, you need to be a little bit different. And what I recommend you to do is to take this one step further and become the expert. So by becoming the expert in your field, by being knowing everything there is to know and showing that to the client, you can really big, uh, build the trust uh, with your client. So I'm going to show you some ways we, we did this and some ways you can do it as well in your business. Because uh, one way to do this is to find market data. Market data that supports your offering. I don't, remember, don't know if you remember in the first video I shared about new businesses and how many new businesses fail. Uh, the statistics was 50% of new businesses fail within the first year and if you looked over a five year period up to 95% of new businesses fail according to some study that was done in the US. This statistic can be quite scary for you if you are a business owner. If you are in that phase where it's a bit tough uh, then 
that statistics might not be so pleasant to hear. And of course I did that on purpose, because that sets up the buying criteria for my coaching, because I also have coaching programs where we go a lot deeper in this that I will offer you at the end of these videos. So that sets up the buying criteria. And I also said that by uh, uh, the, the best way to, to change this is to work on, on yourself to become a better version of you. So you use market data instead of product data. So instead of pro talking about your product, you talk about the market, you talk about the trends, you talk about what's happening, the challenges. When I shifted doing this in, in, in the event business, it was profound. Uh, we suddenly, the clients that, the, that I met that normally would sit quiet and just, uh, because they met so many salespeople, so they were tired of all these salespeople asking the same questions, because they all have the same training. So they would ask all this, always the same questions. So they were tired of this. So I changed my, my presentation, I came in, I did a 10 minute pure training, education. Just educate, educate, educate. Uh, I was teaching, uh, not, not, not nothing, I didn't even mention the product that I was offering. So I was teaching them, okay, these are the biggest trends that are facing our industry, these are the biggest threats to you, this is the biggest time wasters. Uh, so all these things that that person can relate to. So in the first video we, we walked in the client's shoes and we, uh, hopefully you asked a few clients as well. So th this information you will use to do your presentation. The way we did it, did it and the way you can do it as well is to set up an online survey. There are plenty of tools you can do that now, just uh, Google online service. We used SurveyMonkey, which is one of the biggest ones. Uh, this we sent out to a lot of our existing clients and also potential clients. Just asking, what's the biggest threat to your industry right now? What's the biggest challenge? What's the toughest? So this is the business we're in in the events is venue finding. So we help companies with venue finding. So finding the most suitable hotels and negotiating with hotels in, uh, in Dubai, but also all over the world. So when we ask the question, what's the biggest challenge when booking groups into to Dubai? Of course, one uh, reply we got from a lot of respondents was that it's so diff damn difficult to keep track of all the hotels because it's quite unique in Dubai with all these hotels coming up. And not many cities have, have had this growth uh, in number of hotels. So what we did, what I did is then in, in our training, uh, the first 10 minutes where we were training our, our clients, I showed the statistics. 1990, we had this many hotels. 2000, we had this many hotels. 2010, we had this many hotels. And just showed them the curve. And that's quite scary. That it's not, uh, if you work as an assistant booking hotels, it, of course it's confusing, you have hundreds of hotels suddenly. Uh, in most, like I'm from Stockholm, Sweden, and there's not that, maybe one new hotel coming every year, but in Dubai, from time to time, we have one new hotel coming every month, you know, or even more. So that statistics is quite annoying for, 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 the, for the client. So it's about finding market data that supports your offering. And not talking so much about your product, educate, educate, educate. So once I was, do, when I was doing these educations, the clients were opening up and they agreed, oh yeah, it's such a headache now because uh, with all these new hotels coming, I can't keep track on all these new hotels. So suddenly they start opening up. A uh, completely different story than when I was just uh, presenting in a normal way like this. So by combining this, these two, you uh, have a very good advantage compared to your competitor. So go out and do some research, find market data, find trends. And instead of start talking about your product, start educating, start teaching the client. This will position yourself as an expert. And when you're an expert, they'll trust you, and uh, that's the best place to be. This can be applied to, to most industries, so you may think, no, in my industry this, this doesn't apply, but think about it and try to find, so you can Google trends, uh, there's so much information out there, so try, so try to find some trends that are facing your industry, uh, and Ideally, this will set up the buying criteria, will, will scare the client a little bit. Like, wow, yeah, this, it's really tough right now because of, I don't know, the old price is low and yeah, it's very tough. So, stir up some emotions, you know. And once you've done that, then you can start talking about a little bit about your product and how your product fits the, the client's need. So, that's the, the strategy. Become the expert and educate, use market data to support your offering, and not just product data. Uh, another thing that um, you can do as well is a concept in online marketing which is called give away the free line, give away stuff for free. If you go to the supermarket you may notice they sometimes give away a small piece of cheese that for you to try. And when you try that you walk around and say, oh wow this was really good. And then you go back, buy, back and buy the, the cheese. 
Uh, and this you can do with your product as well. Uh, try to offer something smaller for free. And this uh, it's, um, will give re reciprocity. So people feel obliged to give something back when you have delivered something of value. So this works really well as well if you educate. If you educate really, really nicely, they, the clients will feel obliged to give something back because you help them. So help educate, become the expert in your industry. So that was video number two. In the third video, we're going to show you a little bit about, uh, we're going to talk about implementation, how you can implement this strategy. So uh, watch out for the next video that will come in the next coming days. Thank you so much.